Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. Hello, welcome to the College Investor Audio Show. Today, we take a look at five tips to make this the best financial year ever. By the way, Happy New Year. So almost 75% of Americans make New Year's resolutions. The third most common resolution is finance-related. The second most common also happens to be self-improvement, which honestly goes hand-in-hand with what we're talking about today. So whether you're looking to get out of debt, save more money, achieve a money goal like a vacation or house purchase, or even make enough go-to-you-know-where money to leave your job, let's make this year your best financial year yet. Unfortunately, you know, most resolutions get broken, too. (laughs) This year is going to be different, though. We know it. This year, you're going to keep the promise you make to yourself, and you're going to improve your finances. You are. Here are five tips to help you succeed in the next 12 months. Number one, get organized. Oh, come on. Seriously? Yeah, I know. If you're an unorganized person like me... This one can be a little bit tough, but no matter what your New Year's resolution is, you will not be successful unless you get organized. Some people call this budgeting, but this is the step even before budgeting. Huh. Seriously, though, just get organized. What this means is taking an accurate inventory of everything. What you owe, all your debts, balances, and minimum amount due each month. If you want a tool to help, you can check out our list of the best money and budgeting apps at thecollegeinvestor.com. You also need to take an inventory of your time, using your calendar, of course. This is where most people miss. Do you know exactly where you're spending your time each day, week, month? Finally, you need to spend a little time thinking about what you value. What are the most important things in your life? Is it spending time with your family, volunteering, working, sports, vacations? Figuring out what you value the most, and probably the top three to five things you value the most, along with things you don't value, goes a long way towards aligning your finances in a way that will work. Then what? (laughs) So once you're organized, you can really start to make effective decisions that will help you achieve your New Year's resolution or other money goals. I'm not here to tell you what to do. That's personal. But given you have everything laid out, your income, expenses, time, values, you can start making decisions. For example, if your goal is to pay off debt, well, look at your income and expenses and see what the delta is, the difference between the two numbers, and use that extra to start paying down debt. Don't have a delta? I'm not talking about any viruses. Well, then start looking line by line on both your income side and expense side. Can you earn more money? This may require looking at your calendar and time, too. Can you cut expenses? This might require to look at what you value and see if you're wasting money on things you don't value. The fact is, money is uber personal. There's no real right or wrong answer here, but the truth will align with a combo of income, expenses, time, and values. If you're on this step, you want to check out a bigger budgeting guide, check out our article called Budgeting for Your Personality and Style. There's even a podcast for it, too, that you can find in the archives. And that article is at thecollegeinvestor.com. Here's number two, the second tip. Improve your credit. No matter your resolution, improving your credit will be a game changer. Looking to save this step actually takes several sub-steps to complete. First, you want to start cleaning up your credit. Order a credit report, it's free, by the way, at annualcreditreport.com. You might find some adverse information that is lowering your credit score. Next, fix the bad credit listed on your report. For instance, dispute any negative information that just isn't true, such as late payments. If you want to repay creditors listed on your credit report, make sure the debts aren't considered zombie debts. Zombie debts are too old for creditors to sue you for (laughs) or even contact you about because of the statute of limitations. If you contact the creditor about the debt, you start the statute of limitations all over again. You can also check out our full guide, How to Improve Your Credit Score, at thecollegeinvestor.com. Tip number three, 
build your stash. Boom. Love this one. So one of the most common financial goals after paying off debt is saving money. Whether you're building an emergency fund, saving for retirement, or saving for a goal like a house, building your stash of money is key. Quick side note. You don't have to pick between the two. You know, to pay down debt or save, you can try to do both at the same time. In fact, you probably should. Let's talk about savings accounts. You want to open or use your savings account. The account is a way to save money, of course. For instance, you can build an emergency fund using the account. You can choose to have a debit card or just limit the access to it by not having one. Search for best high-yield savings accounts at the collegeinvestor.com. We have a great article spelling this out for you. Let's talk about 401ks for a second. So if your employer offers a 401k, you definitely need to take advantage of it. (laughs) In fact, many employers offer matching contributions. Free money your employer is actually giving you to save for retirement. Pretty nuts if you don't take advantage of that. Because if you don't, you're essentially taking a pay cut. Ouch. Tip number four. Pay yourself first. Maybe you've heard your your father, your grandfather, your uncle talk to you about this. Pay yourself first. And what does that mean? Because you might think that this isn't the way to become debt-free or achieve any other money goal. This year, but it is. It's easier to go into debt when you're constantly spending money. But this is a big mindset shift on how you allocate your money. For instance, say you want to go to the movies or out to dinner with friends. You don't have the money, so you charge it to one of your credit cards. If you pay yourself first, you can have the money to do things you want to do. More importantly, you don't incur new debts. Go ahead, pay yourself After all, you're the one working hard to achieve your dreams. The easiest way to pay yourself is by having a separate savings account. If you have direct deposit, you can have a small amount transferred into that account automatically. And tip number five, live within your means. So important. And also, I should say, live within your values. We all want things that we can't have. For example, You may want that 65-inch flat-screen television. However, you can't afford it. The debt-free financial independent thing to do is to save up for it or not buy it. Living within your means and values requires making big changes and aligning your spending to your values. On a basic level, you can. Just stop using savings or credit cards for items that you can't really afford. Make a monthly budget based on your income, track your spending, and also pay your bills on time. But when it comes to making a trade-off, you need to go back to your value set and see what really matters to you. You might feel like you need that 65-inch TV. But what if watching TV isn't something that you particularly do or enjoy all that much? Maybe that money shouldn't be spent. As a bonus reminder, I always like to encourage everyone to find the free money in their life. You'd be surprised how much free money is out there that you may be entitled to. I recently found a hundred bucks that was owed to me by Wells Fargo for an old account that closed. And of course, they never contacted me about it. Plus, there are a lot of free offers and bonus incentives for things that you're already doing. Maybe you were going to open that checking or savings account this year. Well, did you know that banks offer you bonus offers just for being a customer? If you were going to sign up anyway... You can at least get paid for it. In the meantime, check out our guide to finding free money at thecollegeinvestor.com. Just type in the search bar, find free money. That's easy enough. Thanks so much for stopping by today for listening. And I hope this year is the best year ever. We'll talk to you again real soon. Again, the website, thecollegeinvestor.com.